What is the scariest thing created by Mother Nature? Funnel web spiders. They chase you down if you try to kill them. They chase you down. I'm not scared of spiders, I don't like them, but they don't scare me. I am however scared of a particular spider that controls my porch. I moved into a new apartment in July and from then until some time in December a huge spider, about the size of an American 50 cent piece, lived on my porch. In July I hit it as hard as I could with a 1x4 and sent it flying, then I used the 1x4 to knock down the spider web and rested it against the post on my porch. The spider came back the next day and rebuilt its web to include the 1x4. My weapon being stolen from me I ceded control of the porch to its new arachnid overlord. Edit, thanks for the gold. Ebola. Its method of spreading is that it causes the infected to bleed out of every orifice, and basically explode all over other people so they get infected. I've never liked the definition of life as possessing a ribosome. For me a virus is alive as me or you. I suppose it all ends up as some information theory mathematics. The day you appreciate biology is the day you realize that these thermodynamic laws can actually create something as eye-wateringly beautiful and complex as a living cell through random walk. I'm not religious but if I was I would use biology as some form of evidence. Many viruses have a native host where they replicate infected cells instead of healthy cells. So some viruses can act that way. It is usually in the virus's best nature to let the infected live as long as possible, while still spreading itself. The world is lucky that Ebola kills so fast. MHM. Not quite. Richard Preston is a bit of a ham about the symptoms of the disease. Hemorrhaging does occur, but otherwise, it's much more like having the flu. And no one explodes. The virus spreads through fluids, much like HIV, which makes it easy to spread in close quarters and unsanitary conditions, when infected people are sweating, salivating, and bleeding. But it's hardly as terrifying as you make it sound, unless you're a chimpanzee or gorilla, in which case, your testicles may explode. Source, my dad's a former CDC virologist and was quick to burst my bubble when he saw me reading about it as a kid, and also worked with the people who were portrayed in the hot zone. With my fear of deep water, the Bolton Street is pretty de scary to me. It looks like a quaint brook, but it's incredibly deep with strong undercurrents. From Cracked. Nobody who has ever fallen into the street, that harmless looking brook up there, has lived to tell about it. Swimming in the street has a 100% mortality rate. Cordyceps. This is what the fungus in The Last of Us is based on. There is a clip on YouTube about it taken from BBC's Planet Earth that really shows off how scary it is. I can't link it as I am on my phone but if you search for it you should find it. It's a very creepy clip but it's made all the worse if you've played the game. Yeah, friggin' zombie ants. The fungus grows in its brain, eventually protruding from the skull like two horns where it can then release its spores to surrounding victims. It'll try to make the ant enter the ant hill and infect everyone else. But ants are smart. They pick up on it and force the infected ant out into the wild. The infected ant will then wander around aimlessly trying to infect anything else. Eventually it will die. But before it dies the fungus controls the ant and makes it die mid-chomp on some sort of plant slash flower. That way it can spread its infection to the plant for other animals to eat. I also believe after death of the host the fungus grows furthermore until the body bursts open and releases more spores into the air. Luckily it's only located in the Amazon as far as I'm aware and other animals are either immune or can sense the danger and avoid it. I also think it's what the Pokemon Parasect, SP, is based off of. Prions. Prions are essentially misfolded proteins that can infect the brain or other neural tissue. Normal sterilizations procedures, e. G. Autoclaving and chemical means, for contaminated instruments and surfaces doesn't apply to prions, although bleach is said to be somewhat effective, because their structure is pretty stable. Once you get infected with prions the result is a debilitating disease that is not treatable and leads to a horrible death. My dad is an RN. He told me a story he heard about someone infected with mad cow disease that had received brain surgery, and after the surgery millions of dollars in equipment was considered biohazard and had to be destroyed since there is no way to effectively sterilize it. This just happened in Connecticut this past summer. A whole bunch of people who had surgery wound up dying because what were thought to be sterilized instruments were actually covered in prions.
Apparently the symptoms of this particular prion disease was similar to West Nile virus slash Eastern equine virus, so it took people about a week to die. That's so scary. The Japanese giant hornet. Seriously those things are way too aggressive, if you come anywhere near their nest they will dive bomb the s out of you. I saw a documentary where they showed 10 of those little bs taking out a hive of 10,000 honeybees. Those things things are miniature kamikaze airplanes. A friend had brain surgery and was on a ventilator for a period of time. He described to me the semi-conscious state he was in and how what was happening around him, nurses attending to him, conversations, etc., were all woven into an absolute nightmare in his mind. Like a nurse adjusting his blankets or moving him would feel like she was peeling off his skin, or rolling him off a cliff. It was terrifying to listen to his description. I have been in the exact same situation and I can confirm that that is exactly how it feels. Everything about everything is terrifying. People around me were performing their tasks as healthcare professionals but it felt like I was in a horror movie that I couldn't escape from and they were participants in a torture chamber. I was terrified the entire time and kept thinking I had died and was in age. I kept telling myself that I was thinking and I could feel my brain thinking so it meant I still had to be alive. It was almost like a really bad acid trip or something. The ocean. The fact that we've only explored 10% of it and have no idea what the other 90% is is absolutely terrifying to me. We have no clue what kind of creatures slash beasts live down there. Just think about being picked up and placed in the middle of the ocean, if you tell me you wouldn't be effing scared as less you're lying. As someone who suffers from epilepsy and is a candidate for brain surgery, I find out on Monday whether or not they'll operate, my answer is the human brain. It is the tool through which we assess all other things. Sure black holes are baffling to consider, the idea of the megalodon is horrifying and I know one day I'll be locked in a room with a spider that will duck behind the couch. But the human brain is some next level s. It is the single most complex object in the known universe. It named all other objects, including itself. I can construct a world within it that is every bit as detailed as the world beyond it, if not more so. There is no empirical way for me to even prove that what I consider to be the world beyond it is not a product of it. And mind malfunctions. My model of the most powerful object in the known universe FS up regularly, and now I have to submit it to the judgment of a handful of other models of this same object. Yet I can't even prove that they aren't a product of my own malfunctioning model. It is ultimately blind faith that carries me through a decision like this. The void that surrounds our infantile understanding of this object is so vast it makes the magnitude of the universe look like a birdbath. TL, DR, you want to talk about an object that intimidates me, talk to me about the human brain. Edit, forgot words. Take from that what you will. Edit number 2, thanks for the support folks. I'm being treated at one of the best clinics in the world and my epileptologist has an extremely positive attitude toward the likely surgery. The procedure itself will be an intracranial eek. A neurosurgeon will place a highly sensitive sheet of electrodes approximately the size of a business card directly onto my brain. In order to locate the afflicted tissue as accurately as possible. Based on data gathered, they will decide as a team as to how much tissue is safe to remove without affecting my critical life skills, motor, verbal, etc. If I'm exceptionally lucky, the afflicted area may be so small that removal is unnecessary and they can just cauterize it, a technique which is unbelievably b. Modern medicine is a masterpiece of mankind, and those of you who contribute to its continual evolution represent the highest order of humanity. Thank you.